for those who contributed overnight. We always have people who, uh, you know, keep me in mind overnight, which is awesome. You know, I'm not even, um, I'm not even, uh, streaming and people keep me in mind and will, you know, send contributions my way. So thanks for that. So let's go ahead and give credit where credit is due. All right. So first of all, um, Genetic Gamer did a 50 bit cheer. He says, Thank you for letting me back to your community. It was your relatability and work ethic that made me want to come back. Would you offer your olive branch to other fans who left? <clears throat> are there any people who are unforgivable? The bottom line is, people have done various nasty things to me over the years. All right. They just have. And I am not against, um, you know, giving second chances. I'm not. It's just that some people are just so dishonest. I'll give you an example. Someone who literally tried to put something that was 100% detractor related on my stream in the guise of fan art didn't reveal this is what they were doing then when they were called out for it afterward lied and adamantly denied it only to find out this person was going on other people's streams talking shit about me constantly publicly so then they got banned and now they keep trying to come back i mean how stupid can you be i mean not only did you permanently screw yourself but what on earth makes you think that i'm going to believe that after you actively lied to me about it, that you're ever going to change. You know what I mean? Um, but some people, you know, do stuff that maybe at the time they don't realize is bad. Or maybe they did do something just trollish and then they continue to watch my stuff and like it. And like, man, you know, I kind of wish I didn't do that. You know, those people could get a second chance. And I'm okay. I'm always okay with that. I am. Um, <clears throat> so... That being said, you know, it all depends on the situation. Very situational, very subjective. But I am not a person who, like, on a whim will just permanently ban someone and then never consider letting someone back. You know what I mean? Like, maybe to just keep control of a stream. You know what I mean? Um, I would jump rarely, boom, ban. And then if someone appeal, a lot people appeal to me all the time. They're bans. And I usually consider all of them. And, you know, some people get a second chance and some people don't. It really depends on what they've done, you know? So... Um, yeah, there is, there's always, uh, there's always consideration given for those who maybe have been moderated and want to come back. Um, I will say this, doing it live on a stream is the worst possible way to do it because I'm not going to drop everything I'm doing on a live stream to review someone's case. You know what I mean? I'm just not going to do that. But I would say, um, you know, in regards to if you have been moderated on the stream and you want to try to come back or whatever... You can email me at darksidephilahotmail.com. You can try tweeting me, although tweeting me isn't as effective because I get a ton of tweets a day and I'll probably miss it. Um, you can contact one of the mods, all right? A lot of times the mods get contacted and they ask me and then I'll review the, the, the logs to see what happened with this particular person, okay? So it's not, don't think that, oh my God, that's it. I've been banned, it's, it's over. It's not, you know, that's not the case. Very much that's not the case, all right? <clears throat> okay. All right. Shout out to Golden Colts who did a 100-bit cheer overnight with a heart-shaped emo. I wonder if this is a special Valentine's Day emo that they're doing uh, here on Twitch. I'm not sure, okay? Uh, but anyway, thank you, Golden Colts. And then he did another 64-bit cheer. Thank you. Uh, Bloy Ripper, subscribe to the channel for the fifth month in a row, and says, are you ready for Metro Phil? Uh, yeah, I am. You know, I've heard of the reviews are coming out. And in reality, even with all the, the nonsense and drama, um... You know, and all the crap going on um, with regards to the stupid Epic Store debacle and people playing this game on PC and everything. Um, the game apparently is getting outstanding reviews. Like, people are saying it's the best the best single-player first-person shooter game in, like, five years. Um, you know, brings back the desire to play single-player first-person shooters. You know, really glowing reviews are coming out about this, okay? <clears throat> So, that being said, I'm very excited to play Metro Exodus this uh, start starting this coming fr uh, Friday. Alright? Hope you guys are too. Okay. So, there you go. Thank you, Bloy Ripper, for the sub. Now, we're going to start with shout-outs for people who actually contributed during today's stream so far. Alright? Alright, here we go. So, that rich Democrat. Subscribe for two months and says 10 years height. That's right. Going to be very fun. Like I said, I'm really excited to go back to do the old stuff today. The, the stuff we're going to watch today for my vlogging channel, I've never, like, seen 
this stuff since it happened. Like, it happened and I recorded it. And then I don't go back and watch my videos. So I've never, I don't even know. Uh, you know, I don't even know what we're going to see or do today because I've never seen these videos outside of the first time that I recorded them. That's the thing. A lot of people, oh, well, you know, I I record stuff or I, uh, you know, I make videos for YouTube and I go back and I painstakingly paint, you know, watch them over and over. That doesn't happen with me. I just make content, put it out there. I'm on to the next thing. So it's very exciting for me to go back and see what kind of stuff we're going to look at today. It's going to be pretty cool. All right. So Third Eye the Third tipped me a dollar. says, I'm glad you're doing this event again. <clears throat> I love the first one. Why don't you call this event Going Back in Time? You could use that song for pre-stream as a theme. Um, maybe eventually I will. I just like calling it a retrospective event because that's exactly what it is. Rob Warren tipped me $10. says, sings Back to the Future theme. Thank you very much, Rob Warren. That actually makes you... The top tipper of the day so far. Let's get you up on the leaderboard. And that gets us up to $11 so far in tips. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Sour Patchy did a 50-bit cheer and says, When is Brian coming back? As I just said on pre-stream, I guess you weren't paying attention. Um, Brian is coming back. Wait a minute. What just happened? <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. The information scrolled off screen. Oops. Brian's coming back, hopefully, this Sunday. That's why I talked to him the other day, and he says, yes, he'd like to maybe every Sunday play with me some Apex Legends and see how it goes. Um, so, yeah, it'll be Sunday. It'll be me, Brian, and Kekin teaming up again in Apex Legends in the, in the attempt to get a win. We got we, you know, we got our first win um, on Sunday, and we're looking forward to more. Yesterday, we got very close. Kekin, myself, and Mojo SD got multiple second-place finishes. We couldn't get the win, though. <clears throat> Okay, so let's continue here. Oh, actually, Sour Patchy is the top cheer of the day to start. Let's go ahead and get Sour Patchy up on the leaderboard. There you go. Fred Flintstone cheers. Can we get a, get that ass swag sound clip? Nope. Um, Kieran has tipped me five dollars. All right, and he says, "I used to watch you on YouTube back in two thousand nine." Um. I loved your content back then. I googled your name and found your stream. Sorry to hear about your any money issues. Glad to see you in the situation. Oh, glad. Sad to see you in the situation. Uh, given your trailblazing, best of luck. Well, thank you very much, Kieran. I appreciate that very much. And that's going to get us up to $16 in tips. You know, this is going to be a cool event where we get to go back to those days. You know, back to the days when it was all about just putting videos on YouTube and no drama and no crap and, you know, no money issues. It was a different time. It certainly was a different time. My name is Zway. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you. My name is Way. Le listen to this. Lean in manual ban tipped me a dollar. Obviously a detractor meme. And I'm not going to address what they're saying because they're Jared. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Um, Third Eye tipped me another $5. It says, who has a higher chance of being unbanned, Tevin or me? I mean, come on. I don't screw with your business. I just got carried away with memes. I'm a nice guy, truly, honestly. Wrong. That's not what you did. Not only did you try to get detractor memes all over my stream, when I asked you about it, you lied to my face and said that wasn't the case repeatedly. Then you went on other streams and insulted me. You didn't just try to get a meme on my stream. You are a dishonest dickhead, and you will not be back on my streams. So, tough titties. But thanks for the tip. So we're up to $22 in tips now. Great. Um, Liquid Tism has subscribed to the channel. Thank you very much, Liquid Tism. Knows Nobody... Just did a 500-bit cheer. I said, I hope you and Kat have a great Valentine. Thank you very much. Knows nobody. He, is, he also did the big, nice, happy heart emo, which is, I guess, it is must be new for Valentine's Day. Um, Hopefully, the one thing we're worried about tomorrow <clears throat> is weather. Because I'll be very honest uh, with you guys. Um, The weather has been really bad. And today is the first day where we're seeing some sun and we're hoping this slushy mess outside will melt. But we're nervous. What happens if it snows again? What happens if it rains and it turns into ice or something? That would suck because tomorrow's our day out and, you know, our only day out of the week. It's a holiday for us to spend together. You know, we really want to have a good time. We're hoping everything goes, you know, according to plan and everything turns out well. So, hopefully it does. All right. <laughs> Thank you for the well wishes. Uh, knows nobody. Much appreciated. Okay. All right. Egbert. Egbert has done a 100-bit cheer and says, let's get cracking. 
Thank you very much to Egbert. I appreciate that. Atlas Telemon, what's up, Atlas? Did 138 bit cheers? Says, hey Phil, could you look at a first couple of Dan Madness videos? You know what? That's a good suggestion. And I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna say Dan Madness. The thing is, I don't know where Dan Madness is. I don't I think it's on the original Dark Side Phil channel, so we may have to look for it there. Um But yeah, those were funny videos. Me playing with Dan, the worst one of the if not the worst characters in Street Fighter 4, and actually getting a bunch of fucking wins. D okay. Pretty good. <clears throat> okay. Um, Genetic Gamer cheers. He says, is there any chance we can watch any of your DSP tries? It's the one with Rambos are pretty cool. I can tell you this. I have 21 episodes. The original 21 episodes of DSP tries it. I have them ready to go. That's on the original King of Hate HD channel. And I don't remember these. So this is going to be great to go back. I want to watch those with you guys and see original DSP tries it. How did the series start? How did it change over time? You know what I mean? Like, this will be a cool thing. To watch, you know, all these cool episodes of DSP Tries It, right? So, yeah, we're definitely going to be watching DSP Tries It. Will we be watching the ones with Rambo? I don't know. Actually, I'm trying to figure it out. Um, I'm actually trying to figure out if the first 21 episodes had Rambo in them at all. I gotta, I gotta take a quick look here. No, it looks to me like, um, it looks to me like these are basically various products. And by the way, this is before DSP tries it was all food. Although a lot of this is food, um, later as the series progresses, it turns into other, like I've got Sig water bottles, cafe press merchandise, FRS energy drink, um, Oh, the KFC Double Down is in here, and I know Rambo's in that one. So Rambo will be in the KFC Double Down. That infamous DSP tries the episode, the Double Down. <laughs> we got a couple joysticks. Um. Oh, yeah, we got a lot of stuff here. A lot of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, what we could do is we could go through these originals. And then if you guys are interested in checking out other DSP tries, it, I could always seek those out as well. Okay. All right. Um. Fred Flintstone, cheers, his free third eye, he did nothing wrong and everything correct, that is a blatant lie, and, uh, excuse me, whew, can't stop burping, um, but yeah, that's bullshit, anyway, Save the Pig the Game did a 600-bit cheer, and said, get all these trolls out of here, Phil, just get them out of here, I think that's a, that's a, that's a Wings meme or something, I don't know, people constantly do Wings of Redemption memes on my stream, I never understand them, never, because I don't watch his stuff. I'm not affiliated with him. I don't know anything about him. So, <laughs> why they do those in here, I have no effing clue. But they do them all the time. So. <clears throat> okay. Alright, Android cheered. He says, just a quick tip. Comcast will not turn off your internet or anything until it's 30 days past due. Well, that's good to know. That's definitely good to know. Um, so hopefully, even if this payment bounces, which it very well might, um, I'll be able to pay it once the Twitch payment comes through. But obviously, the real goal here would be to raise enough funds to pay everything and not have it bounce. Because the bottom line is, all these freaking bounce fees are ridiculous. And they're adding up to hundreds and hundreds of dollars that I don't have. So hopefully, you know, today will be a good day. Maybe I'll be able to raise some funds pay some of this stuff, you know, we'll see how it goes. And hopefully, the Twitch payment comes through on time, and everything goes according to plan there as well, so. Okay. Um, Julian Gaming tipped me a dollar and said, hope every little bit helps. Um, have you considered becoming an Amazon partner? You could put your streaming setup in your description and put affiliate links on your channel. I'm not sure what you mean by Amazon partner, what I can tell you is a long time ago, I was part of the Amazon Partner Program, and the way it worked was you would put links to, like, oh, here's the affiliate link. Click on this and go buy stuff through Amazon, and I get, like, um, I'll get, like, money for it. But, uh, basically, Amazon kept contacting me and saying that doing it the way I was doing it was a violation of their rules. Basically, they said, if I ever mention that I'm part of the program, it's a violation. Because if I mention I'm part of the Amazon Affiliate Program... It's basically 
convincing people to go buy stuff through my link even though they normally would not buy stuff or something. It was really weird. They just kept sending me the stupidest things like, oh, having this on your webpage is a violation. Having this on the description of your YouTube video is a violation. Even mentioning Amazon affiliate in a video is a violation. To the point where I was like, I've had enough. Like, I, I couldn't even take it. It drove me nuts. I was like, how am I ever going to fucking... Uh, how am I ever going to let people know that this exists and tell them to use it if you fucking tell me I can't mention it? Just think about that. That would be like, I'm trying to tell you, I, I, I'm selling a new product, right, guys? But I can't ever mention it. <laughs> so how would you know it exists? That's what it was. It was kind of like, don't ever talk about it. Because if you ever talk about it, you violated our policies. So I think this was years and years ago, by the way. This is probably like, I'd say, like 2015, 2016. I got rid of it. I said, I can't do it anymore. And I just totally got I got rid of the whole thing because it was just dumb. So, see the thing is, guys, and you see some people in the stream chat are like, but I know this guy who mentions it all the time. Yeah, you want to know why? Because here's the thing. Some people can mention it a million times and don't get in trouble for it, okay? And the reason that they don't is because no one reports them. Me, I get mass reported for things I don't fucking do. So can you imagine the amount of reports that go in for things that I that I do do? So I mentioned the Amazon affiliate link. Immediately, they probably received 400 reports that Phil mentioned Amazon affiliate. And then Amazon says, oh, you violated our policy. You see what I mean? Um, so sadly, I hate to say it. I cannot have the same nice things that other people have. Because people fuck with me all the time. You know, it's bullshit. But it is what it is. So... It sucks. And I did, I tried the Amazon affiliate years ago. By the way, I should mention this. I never really made big money on it ever. It was maybe a few bucks here or there. People, I, I swear, there would be people who would spend hundreds of dollars on Amazon and I'd get like $2. So it was never some giant thing. What it was meant to be was like, if you have a large viewer base, I guess, and they all are buying stuff through it, maybe then you could get some regular income. It never amounted to anything for me. So it wasn't like a big deal when I, when I said enough of this, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm probably not going to be doing that, okay? <laughs> um, but anyway, thank you for the dollar tip. Then also, I got another uh, dollar tip from Lip Jan. And he says, I'd like to recommend some stuff for you to watch. Recently, I came across a video of you playing as DJ and a guy playing as Chun-Li on Street Fighter 4. The guy had three wins and was about to win the tournament, but you downloaded the guy and managed to win. If I remember correctly, I believe that's a play-and-trade tournament. Yeah, I think that was Play and Trade uh, Super Street Fighter 4 Launch Night Tournament. If I remember correctly, that was it. So I will put that into my list here. Super SF4 Launch Tourney. Yeah, I don't remember what the hell channel that was on. I would think that was on DSP Gaming, but I could be wrong. Um, And yeah, if I remember correctly... Um... That was a tournament I attended, and of course, you know, DJ was a new character. He had just been added, so I didn't even know how to play with him. I was just trying to learn him, and by the end of the night, I had I won the tournament. It was like, yeah, we were in the finals. The person playing, you know, Chun Li was destroying me, and basically, I learned the matchup, and then boom, I won, which was pretty crazy. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, thank you, Lip Jan, for the dollar tip. I should update. We're up to twenty four dollars in tips now, I believe. Yes, twenty four. Let me update that. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Alrighty, uh, Jointed Joker did a 100-bit cheer. He says, do you think there should be a Black History Month emo? After all, there's a Valentine's Day emo, and it's way less important. I'm interested to hear your perspective. Hey, listen, what Twitch does with their emotes obviously is none of my business. Um, And some people might say, yeah, you know, Black History Month is a, is a month of celebration. There should be an emo. I, I don't disagree with that, you know. If there was one, what would it be? I have no clue. And I'm certainly not the person to be making any kind of a judgment there. Um, and that's up to Twitch. You know, what Twitch... I was surprised. Twitch didn't do any special emotes last year for Halloween or Christmas. They were hugely successful in 2017. They didn't do anything for that at all in 2018. I was like, what happened here? You know, very big missed opportunity in my opinion. But All right. Um, King of Hypocrisy cheered and says... You should have Brian as a co-op partner for more games. Most people in chat liked him during Apex Legends. He has potential to be the new John Rambo. Well, 
Brian has been co-op a co-op partner of mine over the years. I don't know why people don't know this. I've played Brian in Mortal Kombat. I've played Brian in Injustice. I've played Brian in Street Fighter games. Um, I've played Brian... Oh, we, we teamed up in Destiny 2 with Kekin. Like, we already... Two years ago, we played Destiny 2 the whole campaign together with Kekin. Um, and a few other things, too. I remember, like, at various times over the years, I've teamed up with Brian to do stuff. It's hilarious that now I do it. I play with him in Apex Legends, and people are like, oh, he's great. You should have him again. I've had him for years. <laughs> he's been a he's been a real cool guy who wants to just you know do more more fun stuff every once in a while. You know he doesn't play as many games as me, of course. Um, he doesn't do it for a living or anything. For him, it's it's a hobby. And if he makes a few bucks here and there, he'll do it. But you know he he when in his free time, if he's able for a big like co op playthrough or whatever, I always have him as a possibility and someone who I uh how I consider. To, you know, to, to have as a, as a partner. He's a cool guy. He's funny. He's fun. Good, good personality. He's a good gamer. You know, everything. You know, all positives. I don't, have a, I don't have a damn negative thing to say about the guy. He's a real cool guy. So, yeah. We'll, we'll be playing with him again on Sunday in Apex Legends. And we'll go from there. If there's other further co-op playthroughs this year that maybe I want to play with him, sure. The thing is, like, Anthem... I don't think either of us are... I'm, I'm not interested in it. I'm, he hasn't mentioned it. He, he mentioned to me Mortal Kombat 11. He's really interested in playing against me. But the thing is, we have to see how the connections are because last time I tried to play him, it was laggy as shit. So hopefully it's not as bad next time. But uh, but yeah, he's a cool guy, man. I agree with you guys. I, I definitely uh, you know, like to do more with him. All right? All right. Continuing on here. Um... Genetic Gamer cheered again. He says, FYI, Wings Trolls make a bunch of accounts and get banned from his channel and come here to be negative and get banned too. I don't know why they do it. I don't know. Like I said, I don't understand these memes that they come in and they, they uh, you know, they, they repeat stuff that I don't even understand. I could see if like, oh, we're doing it and we're really getting Phil's goat when we do this because I don't even know what the hell they're talking about. Like, I don't even understand this is a, this is a detractor meme or something. So, I don't know. I think they just get their jollies because, like you said, they can't do it in his chat because they get banned. So, they figured that it's cool to code someone else's chat and do it, even though I don't understand it. So, I don't know. All right. Um, My name is Wade, Jid 100 Bit Cheers. I've been watching your videos since 2009. Really have to watch a retrospective stream. You have the time. Could you review your Amy playthrough on Xbox 360? Uh, I'll put that in here. Let's put that. Amy. Because that game was terrible. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. All right, continuing on. Moon Walkman did a five dollar tip. Says there are some here's some coins to support your cause. I like the first event very much. Here's some of my suggestions. Are we going to Delaware? I should put that in. Actually, that's in here. I think that's the New York Comic Con um coverage, and that's in here. We're we're probably gonna watch that today. Can you maybe look at the original videos of your DSP remixes like Falcon Punch, Dan Madness, and Trisexual Shepherd? I guess we could. Um, Dan Madness, I already got here. Trisexual Shepherd, I don't remember. Was that made into a remix? Dan Madness, I don't remember being in a remix either. Like, if you guys wanted to go through, I'll just put this music remixes. If you guys wanted to go through and watch my music remixes, the people that made remixes, like the playlist, so you can watch the video content as well, you know, we could do that. I'm okay with that. But, of course, we listen to those songs every day on pre-stream, so I don't know how much people are going to like that. You might get tired and be like, oh, crap, I hear this every day. I don't want to hear it again, you know. So I don't know. <clears throat> All right. Um, right. Let's go ahead and update the tips. Go We're up to $29 now. Thank you, guys. All right, a uh, jointed Joker did 100 bit cheers as you should make your own BHM emotes, bro. I have no capability of making emotes, none. I don't no longer own any kind of graphical program, and I don't even have a video editor anymore. My ex, ex my uh, subscription to Adobe uh, Premiere Pro expired, and I didn't have three hundred dollars or whatever it is to renew it, so I can't even edit videos anymore, at all. I have zero capability to do any video editing. So, yeah. Um, so, there you go. So, I can't do it. And I, by the way, I have no at all. Uh, I have no skill in that regard. I've never had any training, nothing. So, I would not be able to do anything quality. So, no. I leave emotes to my stream viewers. 
And, you know, if people have things they want to submit as emotes, they always can. I think there's been a few over on the forums, but they haven't been so great. Like, someone posted up a few emotes that looked all right, but they were, like, the box. They didn't edit it so that they were still boxy and stuff. So, I don't think I'm going to use them. Um, but, yeah, anyway. Genetic Gamer Trude again. He said, after reading about the Blizzard layoffs, I remember someone telling you about job security. You're 100% right. No job has job security. It's disingenuous when people say you don't have it. It's true. There's no such thing as job security. I'm serious. There's not. It just You could be at one day praised and told that you're the best employee ever, receiving bonuses, receiving commendations. I got a fucking award. I received an award from my company for going above and beyond the call of duty the year that I was laid off from my job. They basically told me, you worked your ass off, didn't get paid for it, and did extra work, and we appreciate that. Oh, by the way, three months later, we don't need you anymore. Goodbye. <clears throat> See what I mean? Pretty stupid, huh? Um, let's see here. Timbo Slice Cheer says, AEW set out their first event in Vegas in four minutes today. Event should be shaking in his boots. Um, AEW is kind of like the internet darling of pro wrestling. You know what I mean? Like, and we'll see how it goes. Right now, they have very, very little talent to do a whole promotion based off of that. You know what I mean? So I think they're going to have a rough start. Like, I think they'll be very popular when it comes to, oh, people buying tickets or whatever. But when people actually start to see the shows and you realize that there's only, like, like 20 people working in the company, it may end up being not as good. But I I wish them well, and I hope that they do good because it's always, always good to have competition. And sadly, WWE has not had major competition in the greater part of 15 years. You know, you could say, oh, TNA, Impact, they were never a real competitor to WWE. Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor has never been a competitor. They're the kind of the feeding grounds for WWE. Um, New Japan, yeah, they're popular in Japan. They're not nearly as popular worldwide as WWE. So, you know, would it be nice to see a real major competitor build up eventually and become someone that can actually compete with WWE to the point where WWE has to actually try to improve? Yeah, that would be amazing, and I would love to see that. But right now... I think AEW is going to have a slow start. It's going to be basically, like I said, the internet loves them. But outside of that, are they going to end up being big time successful? Or is it going to end up being more like they are just the little guys who everyone who's not in WWE wants to be with? But, you know, they never really get to any kind of major success. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't really want to speculate. I wish them the best and I hope that they do do well. So, um, let's see here. Fly Eagles Fly did a 500-bit cheer. Thank you very much, Fly Eagles Fly. He says, in response to King of Hypocrisy, Rambo cannot be replaced. I hope you eventually sort out the issues you and John are legendary together. Uh, Fly Eagles Fly, first of all, I agree with you that Rambo cannot be replaced. You know, he was a, a major part of my content and a friend of mine for many, many years there. You know, it was probably from the years of 2009 through... More heavily, he showed up in my stuff in 2010, but 2009 is kind of where it started. Um, and then, you know, all the way through when I moved out here. You know, so what, five years, right? And he became a major part of, of gaming stuff that I did. He became a major part of vlogs. He was a friend who I hung out with and talked to about stuff. Um, He won't, he won't, you know, he will not be replaced, you know. But I think the other thing that needs to be said is you got to realize times change and things move on. It's been now, guys, realistically, I moved out here in 2014. It's been almost five years since he's been in any of my stuff and he's never going to be again. He moved on from doing this shit. He has his own life, his own stuff. Is you know, there's not going to be some miraculous reunion. It's not going to happen. You know what I mean? Like he moved on. And it is what it is. That's life. You know what I mean? Like and I'm okay with that. Am I sad? Sure. I would have loved to to have uh to, to to be a friend with John forever, but things happen, things change. He made his his decisions. To do what he wanted to do. And, and, you know, he knows that if he ever actually cared and wanted to reach out to me, he could. He doesn't. He doesn't care. So, if that's really the case, um, you know, if he ever actually wanted to, to rekindle the friendship, I'm sure he would reach out and talk to me. He has not done that since 2015, guys. So, you know, there's no point in even talking about it anymore. You gotta move on. I understand. Oh man, the the good time, the good old days, and all that. I get it, but those were different time, a different era, 
different everything. And, you know, it's good to reminisce and look back, but it's not good to just dwell on it and say, man, it's got to come back. It's got to come back. It's not coming back. All right. I I have accepted this. I've come to terms that that stuff is never going to come back. You know what I mean? All right. Fred Flintstone, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about, so I'm just going to ignore it. But thank you for the cheer. Um, Street Cash Homie did a 1,000 bit cheer. Wow. Thank you, Street Cash Homie. He says, Thank you for 10 years of amazing fun content. It's been fun watching your Mega Man and Resident Evil past streams and Sonic 06. All right, let's get Street Cash Homie up there as the top cheerer for the day. Okay. Join the Joker did a 100 bit cheer. So I think it would be cool to have a Baby Boomer Wrestling League where Baby Boomers fight head to head. I have no idea what you're talking about, Joining Joker. It sounds to me like this is some kind of a fucking meme. So I'm just not going to ignore it. Thank you to Moonwalkman for another dollar tip. He says, um, I actually meant Trisexual Shepherd separate, not in conjunction with remixes. Your reaction was epic when it happened. Well, I don't know where I would find that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know exactly where that would be. I know it's in the Mass Effect 3 playthrough, but I don't know if I would have labeled it. So it'd probably be nearly impossible to find. But I'll put it into the considerations. Um, Ben Jesus tipped me a dollar and says, would you make a part two to the $50 no ending song from Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm Revolution? Well, considering I'm not going to ever go back and play the game again, I don't know how I would ever make a part two of the song. However, I am playing Jump Force. <laughs> I am playing Jump Force later this week. So we'll see how that goes. I've been hearing mixed things about Jump Force on the internet. All right, oh, let's update the total tips. Thank you very much. Oh, my goodness. Oh, sorry. Oh, stupid yawn. The last Rambo just Judy said, where did WWE excel? Where did TNA not? No, where did WWE excel where TNA did not? A lot of things, you know, production value, plot lines, even though I, I don't always like WWE plot lines. TNA had a really bad reputation for basically being just like WCW. And what I mean by that is, number one, they had a lot of the same fucking writers as WCW did. And a lot of things with no payoff. So, you'd bag a plot line for two, three months, and then the culmination would be something else, a dumb swerve that makes no sense. Something really just illogically dumb. You know, squash the guy who for months has been the underdog who obviously was supposed to win. Just squash him anyway. You know, like, and always keep the same people on top. It was kind of the same, really that bad WCW mentality. I mean, they brought in fucking Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff to run the company for a while. What a joke, right? Um, so, yeah, they made a lot of mistakes. Now, I haven't watched TNA in the greater part of, fuck, like six years. I, whenever we stopped talking about it on my Smart Guys commentary show is literally the last time I've watched TNA. So, I don't have a clue what happened to that company in all those years between. So, I can't comment on that, Okay. Corn Chi has sold for the 30 months. Holy crap. Thank you for 30 months of support, Corn Chi. He says, was Dead Space your first game that you played and uploaded to YouTube? Um, no. <clears throat> the first piece of gameplay ever was from Midwest Championships 2008. And it was me attending the Midwest Championships, so it was from Street Fighter. But the actual first like gameplay of me recording at home was Star, Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Part 1, Star Destroyer Game Pace Play Sucks. That was the first video I ever put on Dark Side Phil that was gameplay like that. Okay? Okay. Um, Fly Eagles Fly did another 500-bit uh, cheer. And says, yeah, I get what you're saying. You never know what the future holds, though. Anyway, let's have a great stream. I agree. Thank you very much for the, your your uh, cheering so far today. Fly Eagles Fly. I appreciate that. And um, I got another tip from Femi Seymour Femi. A dollar tip. Saying something. I don't even know what it means. I'm just going to ignore it. But thank you for the dollar tip. Let's go ahead and update this. <clears throat> there we go. Oh my god, I don't know why I'm yawning so much today. I actually got a good sleep last night. Like, I went to sleep a little bit earlier than usual, and I got a good sleep to prepare for today, and now I can't stop yawning. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, 
Jointed Joker. Did a hundred bit cheers is bro. You should do a stream where you, you're the whole thing is a pre stream. I love hearing your thoughts and opinions and the interact interactivity is top notch. I like doing streams that aren't just gameplay every once in a while. I do. I like the variety. I like talking with you guys and answering your questions and interacting. I mean, every other month I do a Q and a show, ask the King, <clears throat> but outside of that, um, you know, just being able to have interactive style streams, like during my Minecraft streams or my blackout battle Royal streams, I have a lot of talking and answering questions and stuff like this, and I, I like those streams a lot. So, Fred Flintstone Charity said, What kind of stuff do you watch on the WWE Network? I like the docs, but some people just like the shows. I'm wondering what kind of content you watch. On the regular, I watch, geez, let's see, 205 Live, WWE NXT, as well as NXT UK. So, those are the shows I watch every week if I at all can. When there's a documentary on, I'll try to catch it, but I'll be honest, I haven't seen like the last six of them on there. Like, I just I don't get a chance. Every once in a while, one really cool thing to do is to just pop on a really old playthrough. Like, pop on an old-ass WCW uh, pay-per-view. Or pop on an old WWE pay-per-view from 100 years ago and watch the old, you know, the classic superstars go at it, you know. Pretty fun to watch the old stuff on there. So, I'll do that. But that's about it. I actually, usually, I do not watch the documentaries on there. <clears throat> okay. Okay, um, Genetic Gamer Cheered Again, he says, how do you keep a positive outlook on life? I always get down looking at all the problems of the world. Listen, it's about focusing on the positives. It's not about focusing on the negatives. Right now, and this is real talk, right now I'm in a bad financial position, all right? Within the next two months, I need to raise an insane amount of money in order to pay my federal taxes, and if I don't, um, either a lien's going to go against my house or they're going to try to force me into a payment plan I can't afford, and it's just going to get worse and worse. It's going to keep snowballing to the point where probably I'm going to have to lose my house. You know, This is a reality for me, but I could sit here and just dwell on that constantly and say, you know, oh my God, woe is me, or I could focus on the positives that I have. The time that I get to spend with Kat, the fun stuff we do together, our, our, our plans for a life together, um, the fact that I, I love my job, I enjoyed going on stream and inter interacting with you guys on a daily basis. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I really am positive about in my life. And even though things aren't amazingly 100% great, at the same time... Um, I, there are really great things that, that I should focus on. That's how, that's what I do. The, the world ain't perfect. The world isn't amazingly great all the time. But just focus on the positives and, you know, put, and strive to have more of them. You know, when you have a positive moment, focus on it. Strive to have more positive moments. That's the best thing I could say, I guess. All right? Oh, boy. Let's see. I received a dollar tip from Associate PhD in Business. I don't even think that exists. I never heard of an Associate's PhD in Business. And it says, thanks for the marathons. I work. This is some kind of a meme. I'm not even reading it. Thank you for the dollar tip. Genetic Gamer did a 50-bit cheers. So how do you keep up? Oh, I already read that. Xbox One is garbage. Shipped me a dollar. Said, love you, man. No homo. Bring me a lot of happiness and give me something to watch every day. Thank you very much. Uh, we're up to $34 in tips, so we'll update that. Okay. From Fistone Cheer, how do you feel about WWE losing viewers? I feel like they need to go back to their more extreme roots. They never will, because when they went more worldwide and tried to be PG to sell more over across the entire planet, they had to change their content. All right. Um, which they definitely did. They're not going to go back to that era, that era of gruesomeness, the era of, you know, it, it, we're not going to see that return. We're not. I, I've accepted that. Um,. So either you can kind of watch what they've pro product has become, or you know, in my opinion, you're kind of spinning your wheels trying to hope for them to go back to the olden golden days. I don't think it's ever going to happen. Okay. <laughs> Just a gamer, John, to me a dollar and says I had an idea. Why don't you do a stream with good childhood stories, like when people in school called you "Go to Hell, Burnell"? Huh? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Like, I have told many stories over the years on Ask the King, I, you know. I don't even know how I would do a stream like that. Like, I used to do a segment on Ask, or, or a segment on my, my podcast called Back in the Day, where I would kind of tell these kind of stories. Um, 
you know, that was a lot of people's favorite segment of the podcast. But I don't know how I would do. I don't even know what you're talking about. All right, let's update. We're now up to thirty-five dollars in tips. Actually, I just got another one from John. He says, I know almost all your old videos. I can guide you through everything. Every song mentioned so far was created by Ghost Drown. Uh, see, I don't know. All right, well, here's what we're going to do. Like I said, we're going to start today's event, all right, with more than likely some stuff from the King of Hate HD channel. We can alternate that with some of the things that were nominated and suggested by, by people uh, building up to this event. And then... What we will do at some point during today's stream is I will start taking suggestions of things to watch. And if you are here, which I hope you will be, please give me suggestions of things that you'd like to see us watch on the stream together. You know, I got to be careful, obviously, because some people try to get me to watch stuff that obviously is stuff from the past that will get me in trouble. So I got to be careful about that. Um, but that being said, all right, that being said, uh, we'll see. Okay, we will see what happens. Android, thank you for the cheer, but I'm not going to address personal stuff like that on this stream. It has nothing to do with this fucking stream, man. <laughs> Android, it's this simple. Why are you reading stupid shit from kids on Twitter? That's the real question I have for you. If you're just sitting on Twitter reading all the nonsense these idiots say about me, you know what I mean? You're doing it wrong. What you should be doing is just attending the streams and having fun and stop paying attention to their fucking bullshit that they literally pull out of their fucking ass on a daily basis you know, to try to say negative shit about me and, you know, just stop. Stop reading it. Stop paying attention to it. Because the thing is, Android, you come in and, and address that stuff and then I read it in your cheers and stuff and it gives it attention and that's what they want. So by you addressing it on my streams, you actually are giving them the attention they want. So please stop, okay? Stop bringing up personal shit and stuff like that. It's not going to help anything. It just makes it worse. Fair enough? All right. Jeez. Like, I, can you believe I even have to bring that shit up? I mean, seriously. All right. Um. So, I'm checking. I'm double checking. I think that's it. I think we've now covered everything. Um. Let's see here. Cornchi. Nope, never mind. Cornchi did another, uh, another 400 bitch here. And said, I've been watching since Dead Space 1. Never been good at commentating, co commenting or interacting either on YouTube or uh, but our, or our Twitch. I always love the Let's Plays you put out. Well, thank you, Cornchi, again for 400 bit cheer, very generous, and thank you for the support. Hope you enjoyed. This might be the very kind of stream you love with the stuff we're going to be going back and watching together. Okay, Android cheered again. He says, but they respond to all of us when we message you on Twitter. It's nonstop. Yeah, it's called block them. It's funny because people will message me on Twitter. And I'll respond, and that's all I see. And then they, they later on they'll contact me and be like, "Phil, did you realize you know I got harassed by them?" I'm like, "I'm not surprised. I didn't see it. Those people have been blocked for years for me. Like, I don't pay attention to their stupid shit. It's just a bunch of dumb fucks, brainless twits, idiots, mouth droolers. They jump on anything to try to make drama because they think it's funny to try to drag down others, and they're miserable with their own fucking lives. That's why they do it. Anyone who had a, a real life, right, that they actually enjoyed." wouldn't do the shit that these people do on Twitter or anywhere. So the bottom line is ignore it. Block those fuckers immediately. Don't give them a lick of time. You're going to, you know, you get harassed because you had an interaction with me. Block those fucks. You'll, you'll miss nothing at all. Seriously. You'll miss nothing at all. <laughs> okay. Uh, John Cook uh, did another dollar tip that says, can we start off strong with Modern Warfare 2 versus Bad Company 2 FPS Challenge? It was so dope. Uh, I'll put it in. We're not going to start with that. We're not going to start with that, but I put it into the list of stuff for us to consider and watch. All right? I mean, actually, let me save it here. I've been updating this list through the entire pre-stream. People have been suggesting stuff, so... Yes, Android, yes. Block them. <laughs> he cheered again. He says, I trust what you say. I will block them. Yeah, block them. <coughs> Just think about this. How stupid it is. I post up something on my Twitter. Someone has a positive reaction to something. Oh, let me immediately spam that person with, with filth. So why would you even listen to what they're saying? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for the cheer for Flintstone. Again, I apologize that viewers can get harassed, but it's pretty easy to get rid of these assholes. Block them. All right. I think it's